Hi, my name is Sean O'Brien, and I'm the Customer Support Manager for the CDS Group at Train. Today, I'm going to show you how to create general equipment performance curves in Tray 700. We'll begin this video by pointing out how equipment energy consumption is calculated in Tray 700 using general equipment unloading curves. Then we'll take a look at the Cooling Equipment Library to see how these general performance curves are associated with the equipment and transition from there on into the curves library. After looking at the various types of curves that can be created in the curves library, we'll focus on the basic power consumed and ambient relief curves. I'll point out the data required to build each of the curves and where to source this information. Please keep in mind that these equipment performance curves that we will be looking at today are basic and that more sophisticated curves can be created and applied within Trace 700 to increase accuracy of the energy consumption calculation results. Building these curves requires a more advanced understanding of the curves library though, and a substantial performance data map for the equipment being modeled. If you need help with building these advanced curves, please contact the CDS Support Center. Our contact information will be provided at the end of this video. With that, let's take a look at how energy consumption is calculated by Trace in relation to building loads. One of the first steps in creating a file on Trace 700 is selecting a weather location. Doing this associates design and analysis weather with the project. We need to take a moment to focus on this because it is important to understand how loads and energy are calculated by the program. It is also important to understand that the calculation time step in the program is one hour. And to frame the conversation further, we will only be focused on reduced year weather and schedules during this presentation. There are two major and separate calculation sequences performed by Trace 700, design, and system simulation. The design calculation will determine the equipment demand values using design weather with peak loads, and the system calculation will determine hourly consumption values with hourly loads using analysis weather. Let's walk through an example of how the calculated hourly loads are translated into equipment energy consumption. The translation is performed by referencing the unloading curves associated with the equipment. Let's say the cooling equipment we've selected has a capacity of 100 tons. As you can see in the example for the power consumed curve, this would set the peak for the curve at 100 kW when the equipment was fully loaded at 100 tons, given the equipment full load energy rate of 1 kW per ton. For this example, these curves describe the energy consumption for the compressor portion of the equipment alone. Now, imagine that for the given hour, the coil loads assigned to the equipment total 50 tons. This is 50% of the design load for the equipment. We need to locate this point along the x-axis, then follow that line up to the curve. At this point, you would then follow the line to the left and see that the curve indicates that the power consumption for the compressor for the given hour would be 50% of the design value, or 50 kW. The story doesn't end here though. The power consumed curve is created using equipment data generated by holding the condenser entering water or air temperature constant and then loading it on the evaporator side. We still need to take into account the ambient modification expected for the given hour based on the associated weather data. By referring to the ambient relief curve and understanding that for the given hour the condenser entering water or air temperature is 16 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than the design conditions, we can see that this curve would indicate that we would expect a further 20% reduction in energy consumption for the equipment. So, by multiplying the 50 kW by 0.8, we can expect that the energy consumed by the equipment for the given hour is 40 kW. Note that by using two separate curves, we can generate energy consumption values for the equipment given any chiller load and condenser relief. IPLV and NPLV data, where load and relief are commingled, would be inappropriate to use because it does not allow for full computational analysis of equipment performance over a wide range of conditions. For further understanding on this subject, please refer to Appendix D of AHRI Standard 550-590 and to ASHRAE article A Closer Look at Chiller Ratings, published in the December 2009 ASHRAE Journal. Let's shift gears now and jump into the Trace 700 library and template editors to see how the curves are associated with the equipment. We'll focus our attention on the cooling equipment library. As with most screens in the Trace 700 program, Input windows are separated by tabs. We are currently looking at the main tab. The Options tab includes additional information about the equipment 
and the Graphs tab displays the associated curves. We have to go back to the main tab to see how the curves are assigned to the equipment. Note the unloading curves section towards the bottom of this tab. There are two types of curves, standard and DOE. We will be focusing on the standard curve types today. The DOE curves are more advanced and will be discussed in a future video. Next, see there are primary and secondary curves. The primary curves describe how the equipment consumes energy in its primary mode of operation. For cooling equipment, that would mean cooling operation. The secondary curves describe how the equipment operates in other modes, such as heat recovery, tank charging, which could be looked at like ice making, and both tank charging and heat recovery. To keep things simple, let's just look at the primary curves. Here you can see that there is a power consume curve and an ambient modification curve. This is in lockstep with our previous example of how energy consumption is calculated in Trace 700. Note that there is a drop down list for each of these curve types. These lists are populated with the curves that reside in the curves library. Our next step will be to access the curves library and learn how to build our own custom curves. To access the curves library, you can either click on the curves button on the right hand side of the main tab, or you can exit out of the equipment library completely and select the curves icon in the toolbar. You typically approach accessing the curves library by using the curves button from within the cooling equipment library. You do this because typically you'll be in the process of building your custom cooling equipment library member. The added benefit of approaching the curves library from this option is that when you are done creating the custom curves and exit out of the curves library, you'll be brought right back to the custom equipment that you're working on in the cooling equipment library so that you can complete the build. Here's the curves library. Note that there are multiple different curve types that can be created here. And if you access the curves library using the icon in the toolbar, the list will be more expansive. It is reduced for us here because we access this library from the cooling equipment library, and these are the only curves that can be associated with the cooling equipment. Now, to create a new power consume curve, you can either create it from scratch by clicking on the new button, or you can copy an existing curve using the copy button. We will focus on using the new button. After clicking on the new button, you should give the curve a description i.e. a name. If you choose not to, you can see that the program will give the curve a default name so that it can be saved. We will name this curve Power. Next, you can add comments about the curve in the comments section, input a cycle point for the equipment that the curve will be applied to, and then choose how you would like to build the curve. Your options to do this using the Load Units drop-down menu item range from Curve to Tons or you could use the generate button on the right hand side of the window. We will be focusing on using the generate function to create these curves, but I would like to point out a few things about the load unit selections. First, if you have curve coefficients from the manufacturer that describe how the equipment consumes energy without ambient relief, then you can input those values. Remember, we are talking about the compressor performance information only here. You can also choose any of the other following load units. By cubic, KW, with power units of those shown, etc. Now, let's stick with the cur curve load units and click on the generate button. Note that this input window is broken up into several columns with an additional input field on the right hand side. As stated before, the power consume curve needs to be built based on compressor performance data generated by unloading the compressor on the evaporator side of the equipment while maintaining a constant design condenser entering temperature. The condenser temperature will be based on either water or air dry bulb depending on the equipment being modeled. The text on the input box on the right hand side will not update to reflect air dry bulb temperatures for air cooled equipment, but as you will see later, we will be able to delineate this when creating the ambient modification curve. 
The load column on the left-hand side of the window is broken up into 10% increments. You will need to populate the second column with the KW draw for the compressor at each load point. The two other columns are not required at this point, nor are they accessible. Now, where can this data be acquired? For most products, you will need to contact your manufacturer sales representative and request this data if it is not readily available to you via equipment selection software or product catalogs. If you have access to the TRAIN official product selection software, or TOPS, you can gather this data for yourself for many of the chiller products. The TOPS program is free to download and use, so if you don't currently have access to it, please contact your local trained salesperson or CDS to get it installed. Your local trained salesperson can then sit down with you and walk you through how to use the program. Moving on, you can see here that I have selected a RTWD water-cooled chiller within TOPS. Now that I have a valid selection for this product, I can click on the View Graphs and Charts toolbar icon. Clicking on this option brings up the following window. The data that we are looking for to create the power consume curve can be accessed by referring to the unloading methods section on the left hand side of this window. The interval is conveniently set up to provide the data in 10% steps. Clicking on the constant condenser button populates the table with the data that we are looking for. Note that the EWT cond or entering water temperature for the condenser column is consistently 85 degrees Fahrenheit for all load points. Back in the curves library, you can see that I have populated the KW column with the data provided by TOPS. With this completed, I can click on the generate button and the program will plot out the graph for the power consume curve. Note that since the data we were provided with by TOPS stopped at 20% load, we will enter in 20% as our cycle point. That does it for the power consume curve. Now I can click on save. Now we can move on to the ambient modification curve. The steps used to create the ambient relief curves are similar to those used to create the power consume curves. There are a few added inputs though. After clicking on the new button and giving the curve a new name, which we'll call it AMB mod, and inputting some comments, we will need to specify the data that should be referenced for the condenser relief. To do this, use the modification type dropdown to select either water cooled or air cooled. Our selected equipment is water cooled, so we will select this option. We can now click on the generate button. In the new window that opens, we can see that the two other columns that were previously grayed out are now available to input data. We still need to populate the data previously entered into the KW at design entering condenser water temperature column, but we now also need to input the compressor data for the KW draw at reduced entering condenser water temperatures column and the reduced entering condenser water temperature in degrees Fahrenheit column. If we go back to the TOPS program and the view graphs and charts area, we can see that if we leave the interval input as 10 and click on the AHRI relief button, the program will provide us with the data that we are looking for. You can see the percent load column, the entering water temperature condenser column with reduced temperatures, and the modified KW values. Back in the curves library, you can see that I have populated the required data provided by TOPS into each of the columns. Note that the ambient modification percent degree column is populated with a calculated slope curve coefficient for each load interval. With this completed, I can click on the generate button and the program will plot out the graph for the ambient modification curve. As you can see, the curve has a backwards declining slope to it and the curve coefficients are 1, and negative 0.0173. The negative second coefficient is an average of the ambient modification percent degree column values. That does it for the ambient modification curve. Now I can go ahead and click on save. Closing out of the curves library takes us back to the cooling equipment library where we can apply our custom curves to our equipment. Using the primary power consumed drop down menu item, we can locate the curve we created 
We can do the same thing for the primary ambient modification curve. We're not using this equipment for second stage operation, but just in case somebody should grab it in the future and use it for such, I want to at least make sure that I've got a curve in there for it, so I might as well put back in the primary power consume curve. There is a curve for ambient modification for the secondary mode that's listed as none, and at this point, none seems like the right approach to take. Now I'll click on save. And that does it. Now I have my own custom made piece of equipment with new custom curves. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and expand your understanding of how things work in Trace 700. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and found it useful. Remember, the F1 key is at your fingertips and it should be your first go-to resource to pull up the help documentation related to your Trace 700 modeling questions. Using it will save you a lot of time. You'll find that the information provided there can typically answer a majority of your questions. As a second resource for help, the user's manual for the program is available to you in electronic format with your install of the program. You can access it by selecting the documentation option when using the help drop down menu item within the program. Finally, the CDS technical support staff will be able to answer any Trace 700 specific modeling questions that you have. If you weren't able to get your questions answered by using these other two informational resources, please give us a call or send us an email. Your active license for an install of Trace 700 entitles you to unlimited customer support. Our experts will help you to model your project with confidence. We want you to be successful. Have a great day.